Hi there and welcome to the first row in the Get Fit by Rowing series. Now I do have an introduction video where I explain what's this all about, but today's first session I'm going to kind of go over that again. We're going to do two 15 minute intervals with one minute rest in between at quite a low intensity. And while we go through this row, I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to row this series, how you can gauge your pace and all that kind of stuff. So you could really just skip the intro video uh, and do this first row and you'll have all the information that you need. Okay, so I will make Makes sense, but I want to get into some rowing, okay? I don't want to waste your time by talking to you in a big long intro. Hope that's okay. <laughs> so we're going to do a four minute warm up first, and that's going to help a little bit with where, how we're going to talk about parameters and things, um, and then we'll get into our main row. So you have to get ready for this four minute warm up, all right? And we do that by setting up our machine. Now, in a concept two, uh, that means you get to your drag factor first, okay? That's the lever on this side. Now, if you don't know anything about drag factor, just set your lever at around about four or five, okay? Because too low isn't a problem, too high is where it becomes a little bit squiffy, all right? Uh, if you're on a non-concept two, like a water rower, then you'll probably already set your resistance. If you're on a fluid magnetic thing, hopefully you know where to set it. Basically, you want to set it somewhere you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against the stroke, okay? Uh, next up, if you're able to adjust your monitor, please set it at eye height, because that can help with your posture. And if you can change the foot stretcher height, then get it to a position where you can come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably, okay? If you're set too high, it can be a little bit tough to get there and your heels come right off and it binds across your toes. If you're set too low, then you can go scooting straight past and that can just kind of wastes energy if nothing else, all right? So this four minute warm up, we're gonna do at the uh, nice low intensity, run about 20 strokes a minute. And all I really want you to do is think about pushing with your legs a little bit, okay? Because this is a warm up, not a let's hit the ground running up, okay? Do you understand? Cool. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get going with this in three, two, one, and we're off. Don't worry about intensity or anything, performance or anything right now. All I want you to do is row at the same rhythm as me. So that's one stroke every three seconds. And just think about pushing your legs into the machine, almost as though you were just standing up from a squat, okay? So it's really not that much power at all. And this is kind of, what we'll always start our warm-ups at is for the first minute is just some gentle moving just to ease your body into it okay because it's quite a lot of strain going on through your body right now and so you want to kind of let it know what it's about to do even at low intensity your body's going to be like uh, I was sitting down five minutes ago what's going on and as we close off this first minute we can start to think about adding just a tiny bit more power Okay, so let's do one more stroke here, and then just push a little harder. The point of this warm-up is that your heart rate should start to climb a little bit, your breathing rate should climb a little bit, but it shouldn't feel hard work. And as you can tell by me talking to you, you should be able to hold a conversation as well. There's a chance that you <laughs> will stop to let the other person answer. <laughs> But I can't do that, so I'll talk to you the whole time. But that's really what effort you should be rowing at by now. And it's also the effort that you should be rowing at in this first session, okay? So enough for your heart rate to climb. Breathing rate goes up, but it doesn't feel hard at all. I can hold the conversation. Right, then three strokes time. I want you to take one foot out of the strap, so after this one, so take a foot out, put it on the ground, and continue rowing. Don't worry if it took you a little bit longer than it did for me, okay? As long as you got it out by, by now, hopefully. And then just think about pushing with that leg that's still strapped in, just to get that power in. We'll talk more technique stuff during today's row, okay? Don't worry about it. One more here. And then slot that foot back in. Tighten the strap. Take the other one out, put it in the ground. Continue rowing. Because this first row today is really the introduction. So we're going to cover things like technique. Why I'm doing this, what we're doing, what I'm having for dinner. All that kind of stuff. And then it means that from the sessions coming up, you'll be in an okay place. Right, put both feet in, tighten that strap, 
and I want you to have straight legs and just roll with your back and arms. So you lean forwards, and then you lean back, and then pull in the arms. Forwards, lean, pull. Arms out, lean forwards, back, pull. Arms out. <laughs> Does that make sense? So you're basically picking up the initial tension of the uh, handle by swinging your back first and then pulling in your arms. Let's do one more of these, and then we're gonna roll to the front of the machine with arms straight, tilt over your hips forwards, and just push out with your legs. Hold your arms straight, and the forwards lilt, <laughs> lilt, lean, tilt, that's what I was going for, lilt, <laughs> and push out with your legs. Oh, lilt, that's a great drink, this will make it. <laughs> so just push out with your legs, holding that position. Okay, and you'll feel that catch at the front as you do so. Keep those arms straight, don't be tempted to bend them early. Last one here. Right. So what I'm wanting you to do is have a quick drink and then just kind of slide up and down on the machine to just keep your legs pumping a little bit, okay? And then I'm gonna quickly describe one more time what we're doing today and then we'll kick off into our first session. Okay then, so just to say, if you're confused by anything that I'm about to say or that I've said already, pause the video and it is all in the description to this video, all right? Just in case you're a bit confused. So what we're gonna do is two 15 minute intervals with one minute rest in between. Now that minute is really only there to give you a chance to have a drink and have a little bit of a wiggle of your backside because this may be the first time that you've ever rode this long. So I wanna give you a moment to just go, oh, before getting into the next 15 minutes, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. And we're gonna do it all at 20 strokes a minute like we just did in the warm up. And intensity wise, we're gonna do just what we did in the warm up too, where we're gonna row so that our heart rate is starting to climb, our breathing is starting to climb, but we can still hold a conversation. Now this puts us in round about the UT2 heart rate zone, okay? So if you have a heart rate monitor, I've got my my zone here, then I want your heart rate to be in that UT2, which is round about 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. And I will discuss that in our uh, row as well, okay? The whole protocol behind this. Um, I will describe in today's row. But there's a lot to cover, so we might as well just get on the rowing machine and start rowing, okay? So have a quick drink if you haven't already. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the way I said that was like a... Now, boys and girls, have a quick drink if you're ready. Make sure and check for peas before we get in the bus. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> suddenly be... Don't know why I suddenly became a school teacher there, but hopefully you're okay with it. Okay. But hopefully you've had a little drink uh, and you're ready to go. Okay, make sure and wiggle your backside, make sure you're comfortable. 15 minutes, 20 strokes a minute at that nice UT2 uh, able to speak uh, intensity, okay? I've repeated that enough. We can just get growing, can't we? Right, here we go then. In three, two, one, let's go. Right, so <laughs> I have oodles to cover in today's row. I'll try not to be boring and just informational about it. I'll try to be entertaining, but sometimes it... Uh, so, first things first, 20 strokes a minute. We did just practice it in the warm-up, rowing at 20 strokes a minute, where it is just one stroke every three seconds. So you can look at your clock, your timer, whatever you've got in front of you, and just make sure and count down in threes, okay? But... You also want to think about the sequencing, the ratio of how you're putting those 20 strokes into the machine. And what you want to do is have a nice, powerful drive and then a slow recovery. So if you think about it being three seconds per stroke, what that means is one second drive, two seconds recover. One second drive, two seconds recover. Now I say that because I do see the opposite quite, quite a lot. Where, and I'll try and demonstrate, where people will one, two, one, two, okay. Right, I'll get back into time again. Where they've got it completely the wrong way around. But, you want a good amount of effort to go into your stroke because that's where the kind of the work side of your stroke is. So if you want to be raising your heart rate and things, it makes sense that you put the effort in because there's no, when you slide forwards, you shouldn't be using any muscles as you come forwards, okay? 
Anyway, so that's how you hold 20 strokes a minute. One stroke every few seconds. And then from a ratio point of view, it's a two to one or one to two, however you want to express it. But one second drive, two seconds recover. Now, let's move on to intensities. There's kind of, well, there's three ways that I would express intensities in a workout. And these will be how I will describe it during this fitness plan, this general get fit by rowing plan. The first one is what I mentioned just before we started, heart rate based training. Now this is kind of, it's the most tailored to you and the most tangible in that you wear a heart rate monitor and you make sure to know your maximum heart rate, whether you do that by a test or one of these formulas is up to you. But once you know, this is all covered in the intro video, remember? <laughs> once you know your max heart rate, you then give yourself training zones. Five training zones exist. One, two, three, four, five. So, well, there's more really, but basically, the first zone is kind of just living, really. <laughs> then the second zone is when you start to put in a little bit of effort. So what we're doing right now, 60 to 70 percent of maximum heart rate. And then the third zone is when you increase intensity a little bit. Now it's 70 to 80. The fourth zone is when it's called, well, is when basically you start to work a lot harder, but still not maximum. And that's 80 to 90% of your max heart rate. And then zone five is proper anaerobic maximum intensity, 90 to 100% of your max. And so because it's based on your heart rate, you can work at a completely different speed on the rowing machine than anyone else. So right now I'm rowing at two minutes and five seconds per 500 meters in order to keep my heart rate between 60 and 70% of max. But it may be that you can be rowing at 155 and be there. Or maybe you're down at 255, but it's attached to you. And so it's perfect for your body. You don't have someone just telling you to row at a pace that has absolutely no reference to your fitness level. And so how we're gonna navigate this plan with heart rate zones is with these zone two rows and then the zone five maximum rows. And then we're also gonna throw in some of the zone three, four rows. They're a little bit harder to get right, but in time, what you'll find is you'll learn how your body responds to these different zones, how fast you have to row. Like I know that rowing at 205 pace, right now anyway, keeps me in zone two. And then as I get fitter, what will happen is I'll have to row a little bit faster, maybe 201 pace in order to get my heart rate up to 60 to 70%. Because it's not, it's not just about controlling the upper range, making sure your heart rate doesn't 
break out of a zone. It's also making sure you're working hard enough to get into that zone. That's especially important with those zone five rows that are meant to be max intensity, that you make sure to row hard enough to get your heart rate up. So that's a brief overview of heart rate zone training. The other way is RPE, perceived effort, where you kind of think to yourself, right, out of 10, how hard am I working right now? And this is, again, this is a little looser to get right, because you have to be honest with yourself. And just because you feel a little bit tired that day, and so everything suddenly feels harder, you have to be honest and still put in the right, the right amount of effort. And again, we'll go from this kind of row, which is about five or six out of 10 effort. Because one out of 10 is just sitting on a couch watching TV. <laughs> so this is five or six out of 10. And then the zone three, four stuff, probably seven or eight out of 10. And the zone five, maximum intensity workouts, nine to 10 out of 10. Okay? Like I say, it's easy to lie to yourself if you use an RPE. So heart rate based training is much more preferable. But if you don't have a heart rate monitor, then do RPE. And like I say, you'll eventually learn the kind of paces that you should be rowing at. So when it comes to this kind of row, rather than thinking RPE 5, how does that feel? I just know to row at 205 pace. And then the last one is the one that most of my workouts in the past have used. And that is rowing at a pace compared to your current 2000 meter time. So you row a 2000 meter time trial, divide the, well, I mean, once you got off the floor, because <laughs> it's tough. If you go, a, go for a 2K time trial at full whack, it's absolutely exhausting. Only do it if your body is okay to go through that kind of intensity. Okay, if in doubt, check with your doctor. Like any fitness plan, whether it's my channel or someone else's, you take care of you, make sure you can do it. After all, I don't know you. I don't know what you're capable of. So I need you to be a grown up and look after yourself. But anyway, assuming you can do that 2K time trial, you take the final time, divide it by four, and that gives you your average pace to row 500 meters on your machine. Now, hopefully your machine will give you a display of your current pace to row 500 meters. And that's what I mean by 205 pace. But it's currently taking me two minutes and five seconds to row 500 meters if I hold this pace. So anyway, so if you did a 2K in eight minutes 40, divided by four, your average is two minutes 10. And then I'll say, I want you to start off rowing at 2K, so let's say plus 20. And so you, see 220 plus 20, Oh, sorry, 210 plus 20, sorry. Means I have to row at two minutes 30 per 500 meters. 
it's the same I can do 2k minus 5 which would then be 210 minus 5 is 205 pace for the really fast stuff but the flaw with that one is that it's uncompromising compared to heart, heart rate zones if you are tired or if the intensity really rises for you doing the row because maybe you're not quite there fitness wise yet the 2k based training doesn't care it's still just saying I don't care how tired you are I want you to row at 2k plus 20 whereas with heart rate training if you hit that point you will see your heart rate spike and therefore you can slow down in order to bring your heart rate under control because I'll finish off quickly by saying of this interval anyway why we're doing it this way and it's basically if you want to have general overall fitness you really only need to do these zone 2 low intensity workouts and the zone 5 maximum effort workouts stuff in between is kind of more about uh, let's say performance fitness oxygen transport but that's still really good for you so we're not going to skip those sessions but zone 2 and 5 are where your fitness comes from but you have to make sure when you are zone 2 training that you stay within 60 to 70 percent max heart rate and you don't rise up into zone 3 and 4 where it's less effective the whole point of these low intensity rows is to build up the mitochondria in your blood and your ability to do these long rows and have that core fitness that foundation fitness and then the fast stuff is about building up your VO2 max and stopping your body from plateauing one more right so we get one minute to have a nice wee rest keep moving up and down if you wish have a quick drink, towel off pick up your backside and rock slightly on the seat have a drink first though um, because again if this is the first time you've rode for this long you could be having a bit of a sore bottom so if you just rock from side to side ease the pressure off your sit bones uh, that go into your glutes then hopefully it'll mean the next 15 minutes is a little bit more comfortable for you hang on I'm having microphone cable issues I've got the wrong heart rate monitor on today I usually wear a chest strap so I can tie the microphone cable around it right nine seconds to go and we're going to do exactly the same again but don't worry I'll talk about something different <laughs> okay three two one go so same stroke rate same intensity so whether that's rowing at 2k plus 20 if that's what you want whether it's rowing at 5 out of 10 if that's what you want or whether it's holding your heart rate and adjusting your pace so it's between 60 and 70 percent of maximum for you okay now the last thing to say about that because I wasn't going to talk more about heart rate stuff but I quickly will is that in these low intensity workouts especially for the first 15 minutes that we just did it may have taken a while for your heart rate to drift up to that 60 to 70 percent of max let it drift up <laughs> okay the point isn't to sprint from the start to hit 60% as quick as possible and then try and hold it you want to find an intensity where you can see your heart rate goes up 
and then it kind of levels off at that 60 to 70 percent when we're doing zone five stuff you'll see your heart rate will rise really quickly anyway so there we go so that's how i'm going to be describing intensity through this series and the kind of workouts or the intensity of workouts we'll be doing as for the structure itself it's going to be based around four rows a week but I understand that people often have more time more days they want to row or less so even though I will describe this all as week one session one or whatever if you just want to run them in order and plow through them by all means do so if it's a six week plan that would be 24 rows but if you want to do five rows a week instead of four you'll find you'll be finished in just under five weeks or you might only want to do three rows a week in which case it will take you eight weeks but just follow them in order just look at them as 24 rows that you work through regardless of what I ever say about week one I might just call them row two, row three, row four that would simplify things wouldn't it? <laughs> so I want to quickly touch on technique because we haven't yet now regular viewers to row along <laughs> will know that I don't think I've ever quickly talked technique in my life but I'll try <laughs> so the most important thing that I want to get across to you is that rowing isn't a pulling motion like you're not pulling with your arms from the start of the stroke what you're doing is pushing your feet into the machine and letting the power from your feet get into the handle now in me there's almost six feet between my feet and my head you've got to figure a little bit more between my feet and my hands if you took it up through me so how do I get the power from my feet to my hands well that's all about your body positions through the stroke so as you come forwards to the start of the stroke you have your arms straight in front of you nice neutral height not down low not up high right in front of you and see my chain goes in and out just below the top screw under the monitor arm just straight arms and you hold them straight as you push your feet into the machine and you also want a forwards tilt towards the front of the machine so I say tilt because you are pivoting forwards over your hips you're not crumpling down and really rounding into the front okay pivot and you hold that pivot and your straight arms as you push your feet into the machine 
so you push and so when your legs are about halfway through that push that is when you rock your body from that forwards tilt to the backwards tilt okay so really delay it tilt so here we go so push tilt push tilt and then only once you've started that tilt do you finally pull in your arms so if you look at mine straight pull straight pull and if you look down and see your elbows bending really early in the stroke just try and concentrate on keeping them nice and straight now as far as technique is concerned that's all I want you to think about today there's a lot more to cover <laughs> like posture and the recovery sequence and all that stuff what to do with your fingers but for today if you've never thought about rowing being pushing with the legs I want you to think about straight arms forwards tilt and then push that power in oftentimes that can be tricky and oftentimes I will say oftentimes twice in a row <laughs> uh, yeah usually when people literally can't hold that forward tilt and they're really needing to heave against the stroke it's because they have the resistance set too high and so they're having to fight their machine so if that's happening with you just drop the lever or whatever control you have if you're on a water rower then maybe consider removing some water after your row because the other thing is that if you're really heaving and fighting against the machine you could be experiencing an artificially high heart rate for this pace and stroke rate because you're exhausting your muscles instead of using your cardio and fitness this really shouldn't pose any toll on your muscles the only thing that should be feeling used if you're used to rowing these kind of durations of course the only thing that should be feeling used is you're breathing your lungs like I'm still getting a great workout breathing is up I'm certainly perspiring but from a muscles point of view I feel like I could do this forever eventually though I'll hit the limits of my fitness and won't be able to so a lot of that is a pinch of salt depending on how much experience you have on a rowing machine but again that's where heart rate zone training comes in because as your heart rate climbs you back off the intensity all I'm saying is make sure it's not artificially tough because you have your drag factor on a concept too set too high or the resistance knob on a skill row set to power because your ego is taking over right four minutes to go I'm going to say why we're doing this and why am I doing it right now well 
one reason is that well they both kind of rolled into each other so since about August last year it's now mid-April I've been training really hard and focusing on something called high rocks take a look into if you want to know more but there is a rowing element to it but quite a small one it's like 8% or something <laughs> but as such I had kind of stopped rowing as much and it's certainly put a bit of a pause on making these row long workouts just been repackaging and recycling the back library and we've got like 400 workouts here so really there's enough workouts on my channel to keep anyone interested for a good couple of years but I also realised that that's a bit cheeky so I wanted to make a whole new collection that wasn't based on something I've done before and I've really never done something that's just about building your fitness on the rowing machine it's always been about performance how fast can you row 500 meters or 1k, 2k, 5k and I know there's loads of viewers out there who frankly don't care <laughs> about performance and you just do this for general fitness general fitness sir <laughs> there's a how I make your mother reference uh, and so that's why I'm making this but also because having come out the last High Rocks race in February I just realised that my rowing had suffered so I wasn't doing enough I put on a fair bit of weight for 4 kilograms but I've lost a lot of muscle and put on fat and that's partly down to injury from running too much so I'm going to back off running for the next 6 weeks and concentrate on rowing and make this plan for you so what like the whole reason for row along is really to keep me entertained while I row and it's just fantastic <laughs> that you row along with me and so we're once again at a point where I need to improve my own rowing so I'm filming it talking at the same time to give you something to row along to last stroke oh, now we'll get into a two minute cool down in a second but stop oh, wiggle your backside again make sure you're comfortable oh, I'll reset my app I'm just using Erg data for my app of choice today but uh, but I will use ErgZone, I'll use True so I'm not going to uh, be wedded to an app this time around um, but also I'm not going to be wedded to a machine so I'm going to alternate between Concept2 and Water Rower through this whole plan okay because I don't want the Water Rowers to feel alienated by always seeing me on a Concept2 I also don't want the Concept2 people to feel alienated by seeing me only on the Water Rower so there you go, I think that's the last <laughs> kind of nugget of information I need to give you about what we're going to be doing over the next six weeks if you care to join me so two minute cool down what I want you to do is start this at the pace you're just rowing at but then gradually slow down over the two minutes, alright? three, 
two, one, go. In fact, I am going to give a sneak peek of something I will talk about later in the plan, which is strapless rowing. A strapless rowing is very good from a stroke technique point of view, but it's also a fantastic core workout because you have to stabilize yourself at the back of the stroke rather than just stopping yourself by flicking your feet against the straps. If you've never done it before though, I don't recommend jumping right into it with your feet totally out the straps. Just loosen the strap first, just in case you come flying off the back of the machine. I'll cover technique a bit more. Well, I'll pretty much, most of the time, I'll talk a kind of a mixture of why we're doing sessions, a little bit about technique, and then a little bit about me, really. <laughs> like today, talking about why we're doing this. It's about my higher ox endeavors and things. Just because I think it gets really dry if all I talk is technique and motivation the whole time. I'm not saying that you'd be particularly interested in me as a whole. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that into myself, but it's a, a different thing to talk about. That's why often I'll kind of talk about what I've just had for lunch or I'm going to have for dinner or whatever. Which today, lunch, just after this row, it's going to be a nice chicken ramen. Start to have a nice chicken ramen for lunch most days, actually. But yeah, I'll talk about that and nutrition and oh, just stuff to keep us going. So, but I do talk all the way through the workouts, okay? So you can obviously just wait for me to say what the session is, then hit mute and put on some music instead and not have to listen to me. But I'm hoping what I talk about is relatively interesting. Now we're going to get into a stretching session. Now you don't have to do the stretching, but if you are just going to wander off, make sure and at least stretch your quads, uh, your glutes and your hamstrings, okay? Maybe add in your shoulders if you can, but certainly glutes take a battering when you're rowing. Um, quads will take just, they could do with a little bit of loosening up, but your hamstrings will also, depending on how you row, okay? You may have a sore muscle right now, stretch that. Or, uh, I've got a little grumpy stretchy John, and he will take you through some guided stretching if you can find space and a stretching mat. If you can't, I'm gonna stretch in and around my machine, uh, and hopefully there's not a queue of people waiting to get on if you're in a gym. So put your feet back in the straps, but leave them a little bit loose, okay? So you've got like, I don't know, about an inch between your feet and the foot plates. And then sit on the back, back of the rail, perch on the front of the seat slightly, put your hands in the air and fold forwards, okay? So nice straight legs and you fold forwards. What this is doing is stretching your hamstrings, okay? So if you don't feel that you've got to stretch your hamstrings, something is amiss, okay? You either don't have your legs straight, remember don't lock your knees down because that can be bad, but nice and straight. Uh, you might be, you know, that fold action, you might just have crumpled instead of folding. It's really like a hinge. You just want to put your hands in the air and fold forwards. I don't want you to grab your ankles and pull yourself forwards because that's when you could do yourself some damage. Let, especially on the Concept 2 because it's a slight downwards rake. This is actually really good. The, just your body weight coming forwards um, is really good for stretching your hamstrings, okay? So, uh, like all of the stretches I'm about to show you, make sure and adjust them for what's right for you, okay? You don't even have to do what I'm saying, okay? Do, if you have a stretch for you that's good, then do that. So, we're gonna do glutes next. Put one leg up on the rail, get your other foot and bring it over so your uh, heel or ankle, whatever, is in the crook of your knee on the other side. And then bring the, that knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your face, your knee, and your foot, okay? Hold it in place with uh, one arm, or your left, in my case, the left arm. You get what I mean? You get what I mean. And then what I do is I rotate rounds and hold on to the back of the machine. Okay, and that kind of rotation then gives me that kind of force, that surge down into, uh, down towards my glutes. And I can feel it radiating, okay? So the glute itself is getting a good stretch, but I can feel the stretch kind of, it's almost like fingers radiating up through my backside, okay, so it's coming up through, right about to kind of there. It's not a huge radiation. It's not like it's coming up to my knee. Oh. Uh, but I can feel that kind of glow of a stretch, okay? I'm gonna swap legs. Um, so again, 
comes over, hold it in place. I'm going to turn away from you now, sorry. Whee. You can get to see the back of my head. Can you tell me if I'm going bald? Please. I don't think I am. Um, ah, that would be... Yeah. <laughs> Although I've just caught myself in the mirror and my hair's a mess and I should have shaved. So apologies for being so unkempt um, for the very first row of this. Hopefully I'll pull my act together because I've not recorded the intro video yet. So I have to do that before I can upload this one. And hopefully I'll get my act together and look a bit more presentable for you. <laughs> right. So that's glutes done and hamstrings done. We're going to do quads next. I'm going to stand up next to the machine for this. So my head's going to pop out the top of the screen so I can pull faces at you and you won't see me. I'm going to rest one hand on the monitor on, the, on my concept two and flick that foot behind me or one foot behind me, sorry, the opposite one to what I'm holding the monitor with. And then just ease my foot up against my backside so I can feel a kind of a, again, that radiation of strength, strength, stretch, sorry. Um, I'm, too, I'm concentrating too much on not falling over. Um, that, ooh, as he almost falls over. You can feel that stretch radiating down through my quad and I can tell that it's been a while since I've stretched my quads because it's kind of more forwards than it is. You, should, you really want it to be a bit more kind of a straighter angle straight down. Right, swap feet or swap legs, flick it up. Again, hold on to the monitor for stability if you want. And then, uh, yeah, just, you're not trying to wrench you're not trying to snap your quad. You're not pulling so hard that um, it's like uncomfortable. You should just feel a nice stretch to your quads here. Remember your quad is the big meaty muscle on the front of your leg. Um, you should just feel that stretch. Now we're not doing hip flexors on this stretch. That's what we're going to do next. So if you feel the stretch is up really high, then you've got something slightly going wrong. So again, adjust your positions. So we're going to do hip flexors next. Now I'm going to do this with kneeling on the ground, but you can do it with your with your knee up off the ground if you don't want to touch the ground. <laughs> so uh, I've got 90 degree angles on both legs. Okay, so knee is on the ground, foot's behind, and then I've got my other foot in front of me with a knee above that ankle. Okay, so 90 degree angles to both legs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send my body forwards, but I'm not leaning, okay? So I'm just keeping my trunk upright. Okay, so you want to still be looking straight forwards as you do this but then you open up that angle on your back leg and you close off that angle on your front leg. And that should then give you a nice stretch into your uh, hip flexor. Now you can add in a kind of a, a stretch to the side if you wish. Notice I'm holding my t-shirt in place so you don't have to see, see skin. Um, yeah, you can stretch the side as well, but I feel sometimes that that just disengages the stretch into, your, into my hip flexor. So, I mean, Again, experiment with what works for you, whether, because again, for me, uh, I'm just changing legs in case you're on the podcast, listen to this, okay, and then send the body forwards. For me, I feel I get a much better stretch if I have my toes on the ground and the heel up in the air, but I have seen a lot of like, online tutorials and things where people flatten out the toes so they can stretch even further forwards through the stretch. Um, but I feel again that that disengages, if I'm like this, I really get a good stretch down through my hip flexor. Um, but the moment I put my toes down, can't feel it. Weird, I know. Right, so that's the hip flexors done. Uh, get back up onto the seat. I'm gonna face you, you don't have to face me, you can face away from me if you wish. But you might wanna see the video. We're gonna do forearms next. So put your hands together in front of your face, then push your hands together and then bring them down in front of you. Okay, so my thumbs are now kind of touching my sternum. Or sternum height, I'm not actually touching. They're at the same level and I'm pushing my hands together. And what this is doing is just creating a nice bit of force stretched down into uh, the underside of my forearms and my wrists. My fingers get a little bit of a stretch as well because they're pushing against each other. And it kind of, maybe on today's row, it didn't matter that much, but eventually you'll be doing a row where your forearms will go <laughs> solid. Like if you're doing a 1K time trial, oh, good grief, that can hurt your, your or be tender on your forearms. So you want to do this kind of a stretch um, afterwards. When I play, I have a drummer, you may not know this, but when I play drums a lot, I have to, I sit there and uh, stretch if I've been playing for too long, because I get really kind of sore up through here. And my bandmates are like, are you praying? I'm like, no, I'm not praying. Let's do shoulders next. So I said about stretching shoulders, so put one hand in front of you, hi, and then bring it across your body, and then use your other arm to loop it, so you can add a little bit of a pull of your arm across your body, okay? Not so far, you're not trying to kind of like snap, <laughs> pop your shoulder out of the socket or anything. Um, but yeah, just kind of a nice bit of force. You can feel it coming through your, I guess it's the delts up there on the shoulders, isn't it? You can feel that nice stretch coming through. Now, 
I'll say now, in fact, I'll finish the stretch. Then I'll get, then I'll get distracted by something because we need to. I need something to talk about as we swap arms. You see, you good? You doing okay? You all right? A couple more seconds here. There we go. Right, let's swap arms. Yeah. So I'll say now, I am a. Uh, although in the main row, I'll tend to just my brain goes all over the place when I talk about things, and I can just talk about whatever comes into my head. I never script any of this. You'll you'll realise that soon. But when it comes to the warm-up, or certainly the prep for warm-up and the stretching, I do tend to say the same things over and over again. And I tend to repeat the same jokes over and over again. I don't know whether that's because I'm a dad. The whole dad joke thing, uh, where just over time you just repeat yourself. Um, but yeah, so you'll find that I'll say things in the same way um, over and over again. Just what my, my advice is, find it amusing instead of irritating, and we'll get along, <laughs> we'll get along a lot better. If you're just like, oh, he's on it again, instead of like, oh, he's on it again. Right, uh, so we want to do biceps next. I think I've got, yeah, I've got two more left to go. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, yeah, so biceps, I want you to send your hands behind you. Have you ever seen an Olympic ski jumper? Yeah, that's what we want to do, okay, so you're like a ski jumper. But they want a thumb lift, so you rotate your hands or your thumbs outwards. And that rotation of your thumbs outwards then gives your biceps, the long head of your bicep, a nice wee stretch, okay? Um, and then you just make sure and just get keep those arms behind you, stretch. Don't slump down or anything, just kind of keep a nice posture. Because I mean, you don't want to have a bad posture at the best of times anyway, so just do think about sitting up straight. It doesn't matter for the stretch, you can do that or that, but you'll still want to slump down and, and develop a bad posture. There we go, so that's us done with the biceps. And then finally, we're going to do triceps. So um, I'll do it with my left arm first. Send one hand up in the air, but then it gets bored and it falls down and it touches your spine. Okay, so your elbow is now pointing mostly straight up, but then you use your other arm, hello, to help that elbow into more of a uh, pointing straight up position, okay? And then this should, you should get a good um, stretch into your triceps here. Now, if you're super duper flexible, then uh, you might be able to get this hand up and like clasp both hands together to actually be able to pull your hand down instead of pushing it up. But I am not super duper flexible. I'm super duper inflexible because I don't stretch enough. Um, which is terrible, and I know I should, so don't shout at me. <laughs> I was listening to a guy, if I like swap, swap arms. Um, there's a, uh, if ever you're looking for a podcast to listen to that isn't mine, I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, the, check out the Mind, Body, Brain project, a guy called Paul Taylor, um, uh, who uh, actually he used to live, strangely, he used to live above me, um, but absolutely fascinating uh, podcast he's got. And I was listening to one yesterday talking about... Uh, he was kind of saying how he prides himself on being authentic, that the things that he does and talks about that he does himself. I try and do that, but sometimes like stretching my triceps, it's very much do what I say, not, not what I do, because they're just so inflexible and I just can't get it. Anyway, so right, that's mostly what my, if this is, this is the first of my roll on workouts, then I've kind of given you most of what I talk about, okay? And the kind of randomness, this, my brain just goes doink. I start talking about other stuff, okay? Um, I've really spoken about music today, like Van Halen and Dead Mouse will pop up from time to time. But hopefully, you'll get the, 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 the concept, okay? Uh, we roll together, I keep you company by talking to you, and as long as you put in the effort that I've told you to put in, you will get uh, results from it, okay? Um, especially when the kind of technique thing's important, okay? If you can just flop up and down in a rowing machine for half an hour and get nothing out of it. But the moment you start to actually put in effort, and that's mostly because of a good technique, that's when your body will respond. And after all, today's, these, this plan is about fitness, it's about getting fitter, so you need to make sure your body is working in order to put it through the strain, even if it's a low intensity strain like today, but it still has to be some kind of strain for your body to want to adapt, for your blood system in today's row to adapt, for your cardio system to adapt, your respiratory system to adapt, okay? And it's the same with the VO2 max stuff, the zone five, and then those little rows in between, okay? so. And that's it. And then so we, we warm up, we do a row, we cool down and we stretch and then we're done. We go have a shower and then, then it just comes down to how you eat and all that kind of stuff and how you live your life. But I can't, I don't know what you do. So hopefully you're just going to be um, taking care of yourself. But of course, any questions or comments about uh, what you should be doing in terms of, well, I should, that's a bit, uh, if you've got a question about nutrition or whatever, please just ask and I'll kind of give you my uh, thoughts on it. But we're all different, okay? This is why, I mean, listen, the moment someone offers you advice but then says, but you're gonna to have to pay for it. Basically, they just wanna make money out of you, all right? Uh, whereas um, <laughs> I am free, but not worthless. That's important. That should be, that'd be my, like, maybe that should be my new thing. Free, but not worthless. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt, free, but not worthless. Right, I'm gonna go. 
Uh, this is the other thing, I tend to rant at the end, so I apologize for that. This is quite a short one today. So I'm gonna go, thank you so much for being part of uh, this new collection. Uh, let me know if you have any thoughts, questions, dreams, and hopes for this collection. And uh, yeah, and hopefully I'll catch them through while I'm making these and I can adjust and tweak them and whatever as we go, all right? Until I see you in another video, whether it's the continuing saga of uh, the Get Fit by Rowing, or whether it's in any of my other uh, workout videos or technique reviews or app reviews or whatever stuff, uh, hopefully look after yourselves and I will see you in one of them. Until then, take care, be well, bye-bye.